of redistricting and what that means for people, in particular for folks that you serve in Color of Change, right. um, the black community, communities of color. Um, when we talk about the elections, um, we're looking at who's running for governor, who's running for Congress, who's running for senator. But people aren't necessarily paying attention to all those other seats, or they're not taking some of the elections more serious as we run into the census. And that's going to, you know, result in who gets to determine redistricting lines. Um, talk a little bit about your experience with this and how you know it and how important this is or is it for our communities. Yeah, well, redistricting is extremely important. And unfortunately, not enough people know how this stuff all plays out. And fundamentally, you know, we all have a vote, right? Um, but how that vote actually uh, kind of manifests itself in terms of who, who's in office often has everything to do with how district lines are drawn, right? So you have districts where you may have, say, a, a heavily black population, let's say, or heavily uh, Latino population. Depending on the way districts are drawn, it could be the case that your voice is basically ignored, or it can be the case that you actually, along with the folks who are in your same area, have, have a strength in political voice, can get someone into office uh, who is in touch with their community, perhaps who's black or brown, um, but, but more than anything, it's about your vote actually being meaningful as a result, you see these battle lines basically being drawn around these, these redistricting fights. You have Republicans, Democrats, and even within a given party, this idea of who, who really is going to be able to represent a group of people. So it's a lot at stake. When we think about the presidential election being important. We think about certain you know bills or laws we know about being important. These fights over redistricting are, are absolutely critical because at the end of the day, it, it, it says so much about what legislation is going to be passed once, once people are actually into office. Are there any cases that stand out for you guys in color of change immediately that you have noticed, you know, from the work that you're doing, yeah. where you could see that because of redistricting, people weren't represented, or you can see where there's fights looming? Yeah, absolutely. Well, there are a few things. The first thing I think of actually is even before I started the color of change, and that was in Texas, where you had a bunch of uh, Democrats, uh, many of them progressive Democrats, uh, who were essentially 13 of them, 13 uh, members of Congress in the U.S. Congress got knocked out because Republicans in the state decided to redraw the district lines so that they could basically jerry-rig the system and get rid of, get rid of those, those Democrats. Uh, it became a big fight, well known, but it almost did. And it took uh, the uh, members of the House of Representatives within Texas leaving. They left the state. They refused to meet in order, in, in order to confirm uh, these, these new lines that the Republicans had drawn. But you know, that, that, that's one case, um, and that was a kind of a high profile case, but that kind of thing is happening all over the place. Yeah, they're saying right now in New York City, or New York, um, Governor Patterson is being asked to not run for governor. Um, you know, with Barack Obama, President Obama, you know, leading the charge. And they're saying that the concern is that if he doesn't become governor, and it goes to his opponent, Rudolph Giuliani, It'll be Giuliani who gets to oversee the redistricting lines in New York State for the 2010, and those things will stay in effect for 10 years. Yeah, no, and that's a, I mean, it's a great example of, of, of why the system, the way it is, actually is a real problem. You get someone, and it may be that, you know, today it's a Republican, tomorrow it's a Democrat. The point is, we really need to make sure that people have true representation. It shouldn't be the case that a governor or anyone can come in and, and essentially disenfranchise voters. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's un-American, it's undemocratic, and uh, it's a real problem. What sort of um, awareness are you, um, or, or lack of awareness, are you coming across with the people that you all are dealing with? I mean, you've done a number of high-profile campaigns um, around, you know, various things from the Gina Six to the whole thing with Glenn Beck and Fox. But when you talk to folks, are they are politically aware of these things? And if not, what's it going to take? Yeah, no, I think people, uh, 
Some people are aware of what's going on. I, I say most people aren't. And the problem is it's not particularly sexy, it's not particularly dramatic, um, but it has everything to do with everyday people, our voice actually actually, you know, making a difference. So it, just like with the census, I mean, I'm glad you brought up the census because, you know, fundamentally at the end of the day, the census determines, it actually determines, it helps determine how things will fall in terms of, uh, you know, redistricting. Um, it also has a lot to do with federal funds that become available, whether it's for, for schools, uh, for roads, whatever it is. And there are uh, some provisions, federal provisions that ensure that uh, kind of traditionally overlooked disenfranchised communities get resources. If we're undercounted, we get less of the resources that you know that, that, we, that we need. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's hard to get those stories about the census or about redistricting to break through and, and create a real public conversation when there's drama going on, which is always a, the case. A lot of black and brown communities, people are afraid to fill out <clears throat> the census forms. Um, you've heard recent stories uh, where some people were suggesting that the Latino community boycott because if they find out that there's large populations that would lead to uh, immigration folks showing up and trying to seek out folks. And then there's been a distrust because of past uh, grievances in the black community. Right. What do we say to those communities yeah. as we look at the 2010 census yeah. coming up? Absolutely. I mean, what's important to know is that the, the census project is all about making sure people count. If, if you're documented, undocumented, if you've got, you know, whatever, parking tickets you haven't paid, you know, child support, whatever it is, it actually doesn't matter. And, and that's one of the things people like to keep, they like to keep those ideas in motion because it will actually push down the count. Um, you know, folks who are doing the census, they're not about law enforcement, they're not about any of that. And it's really important that people understand that, you know, we've been trying to help people think through and figure out what we can do in terms of campaigns so people are aware of what's at stake and that these risks that some people think are in play are actually not there at all. And then as we close out, what's been happening with Color of Change? What are some of the campaigns you all are doing? Um, how's the thing going with your battle with uh, Fox News? Or is yeah. that really the campaign? Is it? Yeah, no, right now we're, we're focused, everyone, we got a few extra people on, on hand to help us uh, battle. It's not only Glenn Beck, who definitely has showed himself to, to, to be uh, kind of about the most divisive things in America, stuff that I think we'd like to think of as in the past. Unfortunately, he's trying to bring it into the present, and um, we're, we're doing everything we can to fight him. At the same time, you know, Fox News, we, and we fought Fox, Fox News before. Fox News is giving him a platform. They say it's news, but if it's news, then you shouldn't have someone who's peddling things that are clearly false, and then they're basically there to divide. So we're doing everything we can to put Beck in check and also make Fox pay a price. Now, you made a lot of advertisers uh, dump him. Yeah, yeah, over 65 advertisers as of now have, have dumped back. Over 275,000 people have stood up and said to the advertisers, look, this, we, we assume, you know, whether you're Clorox or G or Johnson Johnson, we, you, we assume you don't want your product associated with this man and what he has to say. And fundamentally, at the end of the day, we're consumers who spend our dollars with these folks. We, can, we should be able to, to have a voice uh, and have them not take those dollars and end up using them to support a guy like Glenn Beck. Do you uh, have any strong feelings about what happened with Van Jones? Because they said, the reason why Beck says he went after him was because Van helped found, you know, color of change. And then he, they made it sound like he, he made a phone call to you and sucked, and you and, and he sicked you on Glenn Beck. Is that is that what happened? And not, nothing like that happened at all. In fact, so we never knew, and heard anything from the White House. And in fact, I didn't even talk to Van until after we had launched our campaign and didn't really even realize that Beck had attacked Van. Um, and this is really what's at stake. What you have is Glenn Beck, who never on his program even mentioned the fact that there was a campaign pulling his advertisers away, you know, from an organization that Van had co-founded. He tried to make it look as if Van was this boogeyman in the White House, just like, uh, you know, Mark Lloyd, just like President Obama. Uh, you know, these are basically black boogeymen who are gonna take over and undo this country. Um, so it's, it's it's really unfortunate because Van was in a position to do some really great work, and I think he'll do great work outside the administration. But, you know, if, if nothing else, we should realize these fo folks aren't playing games. Um, they're very serious, and they'll do, you know, anything they can. They'll use whatever tools they have available uh, to undo the kind of progress that I think President Obama is trying to make.